Hello, I'm Servalary Man, the man who can't resist limited edition items. Today's video will be presented in the same two-part structure as my previous video on Destiny Gundam. The first part will be a quick review of the theater-exclusive HD Rising Freedom Gundam Clear Color. In the second part, I'll be unboxing an additional box of 20 Gundam Seed Freedom Damway Hearth that I've purchased. First off, let's take a look at the HG-1-144 Rising Freedom Gundam Clear Color Model Kit, released as a commemorative package for the theatrical release. This gunplay, available exclusively in theaters, was launched on January 26th, the same day as the Seed Freedom movie. It costs 26,400 yen, tax included. The package illustration is quite cool. When lined up with the theater-exclusive Destiny, it certainly gives a unique look. I had to line up early in the morning for the Destiny kit I showed you in my last video, but when I dropped by on its first day of release, they had it in stock and I could buy it normally. By the way, the pre-orders will open at the end of February, so if you missed it, you could try your luck then. Let's open it up and take a look. We'll start with the theater exclusive Lifely Open It Up 1, 2, 3, 4. Here are the instructions. I have opened the box and laid out the contents. Total there are 11 runners. These runners were made in 2023 and are the same as those in the regular edition. There's one multicolored runner. The white plastic is quite transparent. It is clear which is rare for an HG model. I would say they put in quite an effort for an HG model. The shield has polarized photo forming as in the regular edition. The yellow antenna is now gold and the red is a beautifully clear, highly transparent. Clear blue is very pretty, isn't it? And the recent self-reliance has a high transparency, which is beautiful. The light gray parts have been changed to metallic silver, which leaves a cool impression. The dark blue color hasn't changed much, but it has been changed to metallic dark blue with metallic particles included. The frame is also mixed with metallic particles and has a gunmetal-like color. The beam effect uses Rising Freedom's dedicated material. The regular version comes with an excessive wheel seal, and the instructions are included in the regular edition booklet, along with an additional parts replacement card. There are no spare parts as all are newly molded. Let's quickly compare it with the regular version and see how it looks while posing. This time, pardon the short assembly steps as they were in clear color. If you want to see the detailed structure, please watch the video of the regular version from the overview section. The mechanic designer of the Rising Freedom Gundam is Master Okara Kunyoshi. Probably most of the people watching this video didn't get to make this HG lively and some of you might not have been able to buy it. The number of shipments to coincide with the movie release was orders of magnitude higher, which is amazing. Additionally, Bandai, a large company that can mass-produce plastic models, is the only one that can do it. We were amazed to see Bandai's seriousness after a long time. This large company can exhibit multiple media, such as movies and games. Moreover, it possesses the power to mass-produce plastic models. It is also amazing to sell this quality for 2640 yen within this high price range. When it was first released, the large seal was a topic of discussion. There were many comments stating that the wing's color coding was lacking, however, if you consider the price setting of the HG series, which anyone can easily purchase, I think that this is the limit of the original price. I believe that many people who saw the movie bought gunplay for the first time. It's a good gunplay to make with the right amount of content and even as a beginner's kit. Yes, that's the HGC Rising Freedom Gundam Clear Color Complete. The joints are a combination of KPS and the polypress of the present time. There are no changes to the standard version. I made it for the first time in about 10 days, and it's still a well-made kit with a great design and range of motion. This is followed by posing with each layer. The narration reads out the details of the Rising Freedom Gundam. A new version of the World Peace Monitoring Organization Compass developed based on Strike Freedom's operational data. The design of the main body of the aircraft was by the European Union Emirate Morgan Letitia. The development and production of armaments is handled by the plant's two major weapons manufacturers and ZAFT's Integrated Design Bureau, bringing together the latest technologies that transcend national and institutional boundaries. In addition, it has succeeded in making it smaller than the Freedom and Strike Freedom and the weight is 676. At 9 tons, it is the lightest in the Freedom lineage. It shares the same frame as its sibling, the Immortal Justice, and has multi-role characteristics that allow you to create variations in airframe and armament depending on how you operate. In addition, to accommodate the compass's range of activity as it transverses the atmosphere and space, a transforming mechanism is used to transform into a flying mobile armor that incorporates the European Army's Murasami's variable technology. The above is the explanation of the aircraft. Personally, this is the second time I've posed for HG Lifely and I thought it was a bit of a hassle, so I started shooting. 
Ensuring that the light of the lighting is well insured emphasizes the clarity of the clear and makes it insanely cool. I haven't been able to get my hands on clear color until now, but depending on how I shoot it, it's very beautiful, and I usually double the video than I expected. And this is what happens when you transform the mobile armor form. It is a simple deformation that simply puts the nose of the rear on the head. Personally, I like it quite a bit, but it's sometimes referred to as a lying deformity. Of course, the nose part is placed on the head, but the head is clear and hidden. If you look at it from below, you can see through the face. I think this is an interesting place for clear colors. If you zoom in, it's different. The following is a comparison between the regular version and the it's the same gunplay but the impression is quite different just because it's clear. I don't think there is the cheapness that is unique to clear color gunplay but depending on how you look at it, the transparency of white clear is a little cloudy so if you are worried it may be better not to put your hand out. Except for the clear parts, the molding color is a slightly darker metallic molding color giving the impression that the color tone is a little more subdued than the regular version. For reference, I put it side by side with the Destiny Gundam Spec 2 clear color. Even though it is Spec 2, the modeling is the same as the regular version. I think this clear color is usually cool because of the color of the clear material. Even if you don't usually buy clear colors, you may want to keep them as a commemoration of the release of the Seed Freedom movie. You can decorate it as it is in the package and I think it is a product that you can enjoy making and displaying with the regular version. Alright, let's do the second half. Here's the second box that I bought with the added mobile suit Gundam Seed Freedom Weather Haas. It's the second box and it contains 20 items. This is the continuation of the box that I opened in the previous HGC Destiny Gundam Clear Curler video. If you haven't seen it, please take a look at that video as well. Let's review the product details. It was released on February 5th, 2024 and the price is 165 yen, including tax per bag. There are a total of 36 types of cards, including two special cards that use the original last write down. Last time when I opened it, I got one of them. I hope to get another one this time. Alright, the second edition of Savory Man's Wafer Shop arrived. Bag designs are two different kinds, this one and this one. The package that was also on the movie poster and the package that the main characters were lined up on. There's also a line up on the back. This time there are 12 normal cards, 12 rare cards, 8 super rare cards and 4 ultra rare cards for a total of 36 different kinds of cards. Right then, let's quickly open it up. First is the first bag. It'd be great if I can get a card that I don't have. The first card is this Dirka Elsman rare card. However, last time Dirka came out too so it has become a duplicate. I don't think it's a duplicate like last time, but I'm a little worried. I want to store a heap of wafers in this large plate. Let's move on to the second bag. This is the second card. A bit harsh Agnes Givenler showed up and same card again man. Two losing streaks from the start are pretty rough. It's a normal card. Let's keep opening them up. Man, I hope the card that did not appear appears next. The third card is Princess of Orbs, Kagarura Asuha. Another dud, three losing streak. This is no good. It's a rare card. This yellow aura in the background is beautiful. Three duds in a row, only the pilot showed up and not the Gundam. Let's keep opening them before we lose excitement. The fourth card is Schlazapentine Man, finally a card I do not have, super happy. The character is voiced by Yuichi Nakamura and he is 18, Secretary of Defense and also the leader of an artist group. Last time Black Knight's code Shiva appeared, so now I have both the character and the machine. Both are rare cards, they look beautiful. Alright, let's keep opening them up. One, two, three, four, five bags. The fifth card is this Rising Freedom Gundam. Finally, a Gundam appears, it's a normal card. But this also showed up last time, so it's a dud. Lots of duds, here's the backside. It's 4W right now. And there's no cards left but one that I haven't worn. So this is the sixth card. A Black Knight's Code Chivalier card. I had to wear it again. I bought one more box unnecessarily. Beside, it isn't the same card. 
and the backside looks like this. Yes, it's the first rare card in the world of Gundam. It's the seventh bag. This is the seventh card. Lightning Buster Gundams. This box's first super rare card has been revealed. It's nice to have a full set of rare cards. This card was also released before. There are eight kinds of super rare cards, yet I've got a double. It's a bit of a letdown this time. And the backside looks like this. The backside of the super rare is quite shiny. A bit of a bummer. I've picked myself up and this is the eighth card. I got a card I haven't owned yet. It's the Infinite Justice Gundam's 2 model. Just like before, it's super rare. If I got a card like this, I'd be happy. Insanely cool. Seriously, it's cool. The line of super rare bags is also trendy and cool. The backside looks like this. It's belong as a terminal. The pilot is Aslan Zara. This made me happy. I'm a bit excited. It'd be nice if you can pick it up from here. Next is the ninth bag. This is the ninth card. Aslan Zara. Following the Inja 2 formula, it's interesting Aslan Zara appeared. But since Aslan Zara was drawn last time, I've got a double again this time. No way, it's two double Y this time. This is really bad. There must have been 16 cards that haven't come out yet, right? Because there are 36 types, that's why we're getting so many doubles like this. And this is the 10th pack. The 10th card is this. It's the Immortal Justice Gundam from the Pilot Flight Society. I didn't get it last time, so this is my first. Yeah, I'm really happy. The beam and thruster illustrations are rare reflective areas. It's quite a novel illustration. There's a spoiler written on it. The back is like this. Affiliation is compass. The pilot is Shinasaka. I wonder what kind of card will come out next. The 11th card is this. It's the man who makes the impossible possible, Murafraga. I didn't have this one either, so I'm really happy. This is a rare card. The purple feeling of this back is really beautiful. The backside is like this. The age is 31 years old, the rank is Colonel, the affiliation is Compass. The aircraft is the Red Moon and Murasami Kaimu Lafraga dedicated machine. This Murasami is a Murafraga dedicated aircraft. The super rare of the Red Moon was also released last time. So the pilot aircraft are now complete. Perhaps we should add the Demon Dragon here. The 12th card is this. Oh, it's a Zigok. I got it. It's a Zigok. This is the card I personally wanted the most. After all, Zigok is good, right? I think it's quite difficult. I'd really like to see it in gunplay form. If it's HG, isn't there a chance? Maybe there should be a Zigok revival as well. I wonder what it would be like. The illustration is the same, but the backfire is also cool. The affiliation is the terminal pilot and the pilot is Aslan Sara. Just so happens Aslan Zara turned into two duplicates this time. It's nice to be able to display both Aslan Zaras like this. Even if the Anakatsu pilot covers up, it's good to be able to juxtapose with the body in such a way. Thinking carefully, Ultra Rare hasn't come out yet. Maybe it will come out if you do it in chain. This is the first and third card. Purge Lori, God Requiem. This Lollicoba was a duplicate last time too. There's really no use for this card. The back looks like this. It's a rare card. This is the fourth card. Mirin Hochul Namaria's sister. This is a normal card. Mirin was a duplicate too. I don't think there's a place to use this even if there are two. There are six bags left but the ultra rare card never comes. This is the fifth card. Here's an Orphurum Taolia card. I have this one. It's a duplicate. I don't have this. I was mistaken. I don't have it. This one I don't have. I'm happy. It's the last boss in the movie. The back is shining beautifully and the back looks like this. The age is 20 years old. The class is the smallest Black Knight's code. Carla of this appearance machine is also a card. Wow, that would be super exciting. There are only five bags left. What will come out? This is the first sixth card. 
Force Impulse Gundam Spec 2 Rare card. I also have this card. Yes, it's a duplicate, again. The backside of the card looks like this. Impulse is cool, no matter how many cards you have, right? The 17th card is this. Wow, oh my gosh, what is this? Did this really come? This is the Black Knight Code Carla Boss. I was wondering if it would become a card, but a card really came out. It really became a card. I want this guy to be three-dimensional. It feels somewhat similar to the atmosphere. The color combination is really cool too. This backpack-like funnel is also good. When you put it next to the Orpherum Tau, it looks like this. The color is pretty gorgeous and it gives a luxury feeling. The back looks like this. The pilot is Orpherum Tau and Inguri. The woman sitting at the back was the Torador deputy chair. This makes it three super rares and three bags are left. I got three bags of Carla earlier and I was pretty satisfied. I didn't need an ultra rare. This is the 18th card. This is an original illustration that was used as a movie poster. However, since it also came out in the previous box, it is a double of ultra rare cards. I wonder if it would be troublesome to have two of these. One is good. I have got to the last two bags, but it doesn't seem like anything good will come out. This is the 19th card. Is this Shinasuka who had a lot of scenes in the movie? I'm glad that I didn't have this card. Despite this, the back is red. The entire card is bright red. Is the back like this a normal card? The age is 17, is it 17? What single scar? The rank is tight. Belongs to a compass. The aircrafts are Immortal UC's Gundam and Disney Gundam Spec 2. With this, the aircraft and the pilot have been matched. Even though this was a master official class which was very active. Why is this a normal card? You can understand the criteria for rarity a little better, right? Yes, this will be the last one bag. As far as I can see from the cards that are out, I think this one is probably not a normal card. There are quite a few normal and rare cards. I think there are probably 8 cards each. The last card is this one. Our Majesty Like Freedom Gundam. Yes, there was a normal card included after all. The final one was also a double. Do you mean Majesty Like Freedom Gundam? I really wanted it to come. The back looks like this. Oh my, this is the worst of the worst. And then after opening it in large quantities, it's the usual wafer tower. I even ate all the ones that I opened last time in just three days. I'm also storing some in this little container. I've already eaten 20 cards. Now I think I'll start eating them slowly. In the end, I lined up the cards that I got this time. Out of 20 cards, 8 are normal, 8 are rare, 3 are super rare, 1 card is ultra rare. I was satisfied because I got pretty much everything that I wanted. Still, there were many extra cards. I counted them all and they added up to 12. If you think about completing all 36 weeks, it seems quite tough. For those interested after watching the video, why don't you buy it from one bag and start opening? Above is the outcome of opening 20 seed free WAC tours. If it was helpful, please subscribe to the highly rated channel. The video was split in two parts and ended up being a bit long, but thank you for watching until the end.